family gathering. Right? We don't have to wait until November for Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving homecoming. Amen. So every month, every year, in the month of August, we have this homecoming at Shekinah. So remember to keep your date every year in August, second week. All right? So you can plan your calendar throughout etern not eternity. <laughs> right before the Antichrist comes. <laughs> then we won't meet here. We, we will be meeting in caves, <laughs> in jungles, somewhere far out in somewhere. I'm glad for to be here and I look forward to this period of time each year. Although throughout the year, there are many conferences that we go to in many places around the world and uh, in many conferences that we personally organize. But this is one conference where we actually, where I actually look forward to. One reason is to meet all the family and another reason to meet with our fellow ministers like Brother Neville and our dear pastor Sweet, who's very sweet. <laughs> Don't you agree? Yes. In fact, too sweet. <laughs> if not three sweet. <laughs> you know? He and his lovely family who take very, very good, sweet care of all of us. Don't you agree? Yes. And uh, another reason is during this conference, God always reveals some special mysteries of himself like a you know like when your president is elected he makes this most important state of the union address so likewise I, f I feel that each year when we come here it is something like that God makes some very important statements and you hear some um, marching orders some understanding from heaven what is heaven's plan what God intends for his body to do where we should walk how we should do how we should conduct ourselves you know one of the role of a I won't say a New Testament or modern prophet or I would rather say use the word the last days prophet is not simply to prophesy of things to come or not just simply to have everybody stand in a row and then lay their hands and prophesy over each and every one of them which is the most simplest thing to do but one of the most important role of a last days prophet is to reveal the whole counsel of God what is God intending at this period of time? What are the plans of God? The future plans. You know, if you read the Holy Bible, especially the prophetical books from Isaiah right up to Malachi, there is a two-pronged approach of prophecy. One is that which pertains to the nation of Israel, and another is to the events of the last days. Every one of those books, Isaiah right up to Belakai, and especially the books of Daniel right up to Malachi, they are all pointing towards the end times, and they speak of our days. There's always a two-pronged approach. So, certain things that are veiled in the prophecies, like for example, if you read the book of Daniel, the many, many visions 
and prophecies that he received, he was told, seal them up. When, when the prophet Daniel saw, he understood. He had the meaning or he knew the meaning of those visions and the interpretations. But he was told, sealed it up. Let me give you another example. In Revelation chapter 10, when the apostle John saw this mighty huge angel who came and stood before him, he was so huge that the Bible says his head touched the clouds. You know, we always think angels to be of our normal height. Short is like me. You know, you may have seen uh, two differences in this conference. Sometimes this pulpit is down there. Sometimes it's up here. Whenever it moves up here, it is meant for shorties. So that is a sign, the moving of the pulpit. You know, when that angel who stood so huge, whose head touched the clouds, when John stood beside the angel, he appeared as an ant that small. And there are many more angels who are much taller than that. And when this angel of Revelation 10 stands beside those angels, he looks like a small ant then can you imagine what great things there are in heaven? You know, that's why the Apostle Paul writes, Our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our mind what great things God has prepared for His people. Just two days ago, I was meditating the scriptures one morning. If you will turn your... Bible with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. These are just going to be preface to what I'm going to share with you or what you're going to hear in this conference from all the speakers who are here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and we will read from verses 3 onwards. But if our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost, in whom the God of this age hath blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sure you have read this scripture tons of times in your life. So have I. And the most popular interpretation of this scripture is this pertains to those who are not safe. Because if you look at verse 3, it says, Our gospel be hidden is hidden to them that are lost. You know, all my years of uh, being saved as a Christian in the year 1978 till now, whenever I read the scripture, that's how I understood. Being an evangelist, and that's how I understand until two days ago. Two days ago, as I was meditating the scripture, the Lord, through His Spirit, made it known to me there is another angle or another level of revelation of interpretation of the scripture besides its natural meaning to as an evangelistic message to the lost. Now, this is another aspect of the interpretation. But if our gospel is hidden, be hidden, 
it is hidden to them that are lost lost to what lost to all the precious and valuable things of the things in heaven and that refers to the christians in whom the god of this age had blinded the minds so that they cannot see and believe the deeper larger things that are in heaven or the things that are to come they cannot receive it they cannot accept it because the god of this age has blinded their eyes that is why the established church or the learned theologians or the learned ministers or the learned believers oppose that this kind of uh, new things they are not new they are age old they are as old as the bible is they are opposing it saying it's not of the bible or it is unscriptural or it is unbiblical why do they say that because the god of this age has blinded their eyes from seeing beyond from beyond what is normal for example when the lord jesus christ walked this earth he brought a new understanding to what has already been established for the last 3000 years or 4000 years and the pharisees and the sadducees could not accept what the lord jesus was teaching he said you have been told an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth that's what you have heard that's what you have been told from the law of moses but i say unto you if anybody slaps you on your right cheek turn your left could they receive it they could not because it is contrary or it is something new that they have never understood or never known this past several thousands of years and another established teaching was you shall not work on the sabbath day but here comes the lord jesus who is the lord of the sabbath the god who created the sabbath and he went around doing good on the sabbath day he was eating on the sabbath day he was walking from point a to point b on the sabbath day he was healing the sick on the sabbath day which were contrary to all the established laws of the church and he was heavily persecuted because he went contrary or he swam against the tide of the present times to the established church whatever the lord taught was heresy because it was contrary to what they have known contrary to what they are comfortable with contrary what they have been taught from the day they got saved in normal churches now comes something new scrolls coming down from heaven chariots coming into a church and you open your eyes you don't see any chariot you know this this uh, afternoon when uh, our dear brother dr bruce was sharing his message i was waiting on god and preparing my message for this evening and i just felt inspired or a thought came to my mind to log on to the website to see uh, what he was going to share and i happened to log on just 2 minutes before he said i saw the saint zechariah you know me just two minutes before that and uh, when he asked everybody to stand up to receive that blessing or the anointing i knelt down in my room because though we are far away god is still near to bless us right so i, I didn't want to miss what god's messenger has come and as i knelt down you will be surprised to hear this i saw 
the Saint Zechariah also standing in my room. He stood in my room as much as he was here in the church when Dr. Bruce was sharing. And he laid two scrolls on my table. He said, receive this. This is part of the message that you are going to share at this conference. And then he began to pray, he began to prophesy. And the things, some of the things that the Saint Zechariah told me were the words that were coming out of his lips when he was prophesying. Now, these kind of things are unheard of in the normal established church. Do you all agree? Yes. So, will that make established people uncomfortable? Yes. To make to suddenly make you feel there's a ghost here. <laughs> you know, if they can call the Lord Jesus a ghost, he came walking on the water, and all the disciples looked and said, That's a ghost. Right? If they can call the Lord a ghost, they can certainly call you and me as a ghost. <laughs> My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, let me emphasize one more time again. Our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard what God has prepared for these last days. You know, sometimes when we are persecuted like this, we are very hesitant to talk any further. Let's, some years ago, Neville and I decided, let's zip it up. Some many years ago, we decided, enough of all this. Let's just zip it up. You know, whatever blessings or heritage we are receiving from the Lord, let it be just within our confines. When we meet one another, we share, we discuss, and that's it. Let's not talk about this anymore. White throw pearls, you know. And, and then, we were together at, uh, in Alabama for a conference. In that conference, an angel of the Lord came towards me and said, don't hold back whatever God has shown. So I... I Neville was standing beside me and I poked him. <laughs> I said, you know, this angel just came up to me and said this. He looked at me with an ashen look on his face. He said, you too heard that? <laughs> so, that day we decided, okay, we will not zip up anymore. We will just speak. There will always be ears to hear and eyes to see. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. And as we keep on speaking, the years went by. And especially in the last few years, when God began to do more new things and reveal more new things, more revelations. You know, before the culmination of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, God is going to make known the riches of his glory of the things in heaven and the things in the word of God which our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our mind. And uh, as we keep on sharing this, so did the persecution increased. You know? And I face a lot of Persecution. You know, a whole bunch of pastors in India and elsewhere forming associations just for me. <laughs> How blessed I was. You know, associations and uh, monthly pastoral meetings and gatherings just to criticize me, just to meditate on me. Their lunches, lunch fellowships, their coffee fellowships is nothing about the Lord but just talk about me. <laughs> so, I felt so blessed and privileged <laughs> that I became the, 
the talk of their fellowships. You know, my ratings would have gone up. <laughs> and uh, of course, it hurt. Won't it? Yes. Isn't it? It would. But so I was getting tired of all this again. We were, I was going to a conference in Nigeria in April and uh, we were going to conduct a youth conference there. One was in uh, Kenya and was, one was in Nigeria. And just as before we went, you know, my reputation always precedes me wherever I go. So these criticisms went right before me. And this uh, brunt of uh, persecutions, uh, wrong uh, things, they went right before me. And again, pastoral associations were formed in uh, Kenya and Nigeria. And I became like a conference talk. So many of them wanted to close down our conferences. But the the lady who invited me to Kenya stood up very strongly. She said, no, no matter which church stands or falls, we will have this conference. So the conference in Nigeria, I mean in Kenya, went through smoothly. And eventually all the pastors who opposed came and apologized for having misunderstood. You know, you just cannot simply listen to all the junk on YouTube. You know, there are the good, the bad, and the ugly on the YouTube. <laughs> so, you must know how to fish only the good. Sometimes, people eat the junk more than the good. Just like in America, you know. <laughs> you eat more junk food than good food. Right? So when I come to America, the same spirit comes upon me. <laughs> and I end up eating hamburgers every day. <clears throat> so I will tell my host after the meeting, Let's drive through a hamburger. <laughs> Let's pick up a hamburger and some fries. <laughs> what good is a hamburger without fries, right? <laughs> so, and we end up eating all kinds of junk food, which doesn't make us healthy. So likewise, there are all kinds of junks out there on YouTube. You know, if they post a whole message for you to scrutinize and hear the whole counsel, it's okay. But what they do, they just cut pieces and they post on the YouTube to justify their accusations when just taking a sentence out of course, it will make it talk in any way it wants. Just like how the devil even quoted scripture. See, he was also smart. He knew the scriptures. He knew exactly what scripture to take to counter the Lord Jesus. But of course, he only quoted half the scripture. Just like what today editors, you know, there are so many great video editors and audio editors out there in the cyber world. They just cut sentences and then to justify. So anyway, the, the group of churches in Nigeria decided to boycott our meetings based on all these stuffs. And they announced in all their churches in Lagos, Nigeria, that none of their youths should attend our meetings. Of course, I didn't know all this. Then we landed in Lagos, Nigeria, and there were about 450 youths who came from all over Nigeria except Lagos. Because in Lagos, all the churches decided to have a revival meeting on exactly the same dates that we were having our meetings. So whenever I hear such 
revival meetings, I am doubly happy because at least for my sake, the churches are having revivals. <laughs> you know, by opposing, something good comes out of it. So be it. Right? At least for once, for my sake, they all gather to pray. <laughs> At least once, for my sake, all the pastors get together. The rest of the year, they are fighting like cats and dogs. <laughs> During those five days of the conference, they all get together for one common good to pray. See, that's something good, right? That's how I see it. So, in Lagos, Nigeria, I was quite discouraged. I decided, you know, why talk about all these heavenly things, the communion of saints, all this angel stuff. Let's all bundle them all up and keep in my suitcase, I will just stick to the word. You know, I decided to be a more word-based than anything else-based message. So I prepared my messages like that. And on the first day of the conference there, while the worship was going on, as I was closing my eyes and praying, of course I was also not grumbling, but pouring out my complain to the Lord about all this. I said, Lord, this is what's going on in this city. So therefore, I will just stick to all this. And please don't give me any revelation. <laughs> please don't allow any angel to walk up and down <laughs> or come up and or don't let any chariot to come suddenly and show me what things are going to happen. So I was praying like this when I saw the Saint Joel walk up towards me. He came towards me and he looked straight into my eye like a, a strict father would look and speak to his son. He looked straight into my eyes and he said, You have been trained for 30 years to teach this last day's generation these things. You must not hold back. If you did, God will raise up somebody else to do that job. And that is enough to settle it. <laughs> so I decided, you know, once again, who cares what comes, what not, don't comes. Right? right? There's always a remnant. Are always a remnant you know we, are, we don't care for a crowd the crowd will always fall into the ditch but it is the remnant that will always always be found together with the Lamb of God on Mount Zion it's the remnant so our job is to prepare the remnant for these last days Amen so are you the remnant? Yes. If you are the remnant, please stand up for a word right now, for a prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence in the name of our dear Lord Jesus Christ this evening. Thank you, Holy Father for gathering all your dear children from far and near into this wonderful church this evening and also to those who are afar away who are watching this program this conference through the live telecasts through web streaming thank you father for calling those who are yours to be by your side to be taught by you and to be prepared by your spirit to be made known the deep mysteries of the ages to come you told your disciples when they question you why do you speak in parables and you said, 
to them i speak in parables but to you the remnant group the chosen group the called group to you i make known the mysteries of the kingdom and i thank you holy father as we lift up our holy hands unto you to give you thanks for such a time as this where we can gather under your eternal wings to be prepared by your fires for these last days to be adorned with a heavenly garment like how the bride is adorned to meet her bridegroom to be made battle ready like how it is prophesied in the book of joel chapter 2 the last days army of god who has been prepared forge in the fires of the holy spirit battle ready for the last days thank you holy father for gathering your remnant together under your or in your ness we now ask you as the mother eagle and the father eagle brings pieces of flesh to feed the little eaglets we now ask you to come and feed us feed us the deep things the mysteries of the kingdom and the mysteries of the signs of the times that we may understand the hidden things that we may understand our purpose our call and our position in the last days army of god Amen. and i thank you holy father even right now you have sent some of your special angels of might who are standing all over this auditorium at various places thank you holy father and i pray all those who have ears to hear and eyes to see and minds to understand may perceive and receive the messages these angels are carrying for them as i am speak praying this prayer i perceive in my spirit right now these mighty angels they are really huge and mighty of very high stature and high rank high stature not just in height but high stature in their position and rank in heaven they have come bearing messages to not all but some of the chosen ones the call ones who are here if you will humble yourselves if you will prepare yourselves sanctify your minds sanctify your hearts sanctify your eyes sanctify your ears you will see you will receive these messages these angels are bearing scrolls for you for you to take the next step which may be a giant leap of faith for you thank you wonderful lord jesus i see more clearly this mighty ones in our midst they are really dressed in battle ready garments mighty 
with a red maroon undergarment and metal protection golden like metal protection all over their bodies like how a roman soldier would be dressed and i made to understand concerning this armor that they are wearing they say nothing can penetrate this armor though it looks normal armor not very thick just thin like a normal armor yet it is so powerful that no weapon of this world now the weapon of the world to come can penetrate none of the weapons of the devil can penetrate these armors and this angel also tells me they have specially come the many of them that are standing all over this auditorium but there is the captain of them who is standing right in the center center aisle of this church and in the center aisle and in the middle section of this church and he says this armor that they are wearing will also be given to those for whom it has been appointed especially to those who are in the front line of the ministry front line of doing works for god and he now shows me his head gear he lifts it up and he shows me said this is a very important part of the armor and why it is very important because two things one it protects the mind of christ from being corrupted by the things of this world and by the craftiness of the devil the believer is supposed to possess the mind of christ but when the mind is not protected or covered it will the darts of the devil can penetrate into your mind corrupting it and duplicating it to manifest like the mind of christ just like how the craftiness of the devil beguiled if to say twisting the words of god when he said when you eat the fruit you shall surely die he twisted the fruit the word to say you shall not surely die such twisting and corruption will take place in your mind humble yourselves like a little child have the mind as innocent like a little child that will be quick to believe the things of the spirit come and lift up your holy hands and bless the name of the living god right now thank you wonderful god sori bi khaba ba khaba ba 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 sha now i see him pointing to his feet and i see the shoes that he is wearing it is dark silvery but very strong very robust like a military soldiers thick boots but this is armor it's all covered and he says this are for the purpose of 
like how the prophet Elijah was told the walk that he needs to walk is very long and he walked for 40 days and 40 nights in the strength of the angel's foot likewise you need to be adorned with this foot because your walk in this world in these last days should not be corrupted by the devil by the ways of the world to walk in its ways you need to put on the shoes so that as the angels walk in the ways of God so should the last days army walk in the ways of God thank you wonderful God oh we lift up our holy hands unto you and we bless your holy name you are a good God your grace and mercy endures forever and ever I love you Lord and I live my words to Joy, my King, in what you need, let it be a sweet, sweet sound, let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Open the eyes of our understanding, Lord. Give us an understanding mind and a listening heart that we may hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to the churches in these last days.
Nobody to crave that thing for me now It is spending time with you I want to stay with you forever So that I can see you, love you And care for you I feel magical when you are around me I feel that there is a connection of the heart and soul 
have seen love before, but I never felt that great before. I can say proudly that I love you and your love is great. You are so. Velvet great before I can say proudly that I love you and your love is great. You are such an amazing man. You have awakened a part of me. You have created something. Such an amazing man I have seen love before But I never felt that great before I can say proudly That I love you and your love is great You are such an amazing man I have seen love before But I never felt that great before I can say proudly That I love you and your love is great You are such an amazing man You have awakened a part of me You have created something I've never knew You not only care about me But you won't wear respect me as I am You have accepted a part of me And that makes all the difference to me You are so Me. You are such an amazing